What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. Mock draft time, baby. We're going to be doing this every single week going forward. And this is going to be for rookie stuff, for dynasty stuff, whatever, whatever. I need your help identifying how you want me to do this, right? Because I can sit here and we can go with a 12-team super flex mock draft for the rookie class now that's post-combine. And I can rip off 48 names. I'm capable. This brain is fucking huge, despite my little peanut head. All right? So I can go 101 to 412, 48 picks, and sit here podcast style. And knowing myself, I usually take like 17 minutes for each player. 17 times 48 going to be a problem. So that's probably not the way to go about doing this. So what I think I'm going to do is do some live streams where y'all can jump in with us. This first mock draft, I've uh, gathered up some... Some heavy hitters within the industry, okay? So we've got Ray GQ in here. We got Mike Me Up. We got Noah Moore Parties. We got Bush League. We got Sexy Pass, Jared Wackerly. We got some homies from the Discord as well. Um, so we are filling up the draft right now, and this is just going to be straight up a 12-team super flex rookie mock draft, half PPR, I guess. Uh, we're going to go four rounds. We have not done a full four-round mock draft yet. We've done the first round. We did a one quarterback. We did a two-round, but I'm feeling... More and more well-versed as the time goes by. You know, I've done a little bit more research. We have a little bit more of the picture painted with the combine numbers coming in, athletic testing, and all this other bullshit, okay? So that's what today's video is going to be. If y'all enjoy the video, make sure you hit the button that looks like this. Make sure you throw the D and subscribe, and that's for, therefore, Dunst for becoming subscribed to the channel because we're doing everything Dynasty and Rookie related up until the season uh, and in the summer when we'll do some season-long shite. All right, so that's a quick intro. After the intro, we are going to jump into the mock draft. So before we do so, tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. Let's see. All right, so we've got the band together. We've got Mr. Raptor, Jared Wackley, Ray G, Corey Bush, Noah Moore Party, Sexy Pats, yours truly, mic me up, Kyle, NFL, Josh Rosenfield, Kankar Brad, Jack Cray. You know, I gave him the heads up, the warning. Everybody get your fucking shirts tucked in. The two-minute warning is about to rip off, and we are here. I'm ready to draft. I'm basically just going to be roasting everybody's picks. I love that uh, Noah's already starting – the shit talk on on Isaiah Spiller because Ray's going to take him at the 103. This is a beautiful draft setup. All right, let's fucking roll it. Skirt. 60 seconds per pick. This is a super flex league. Half PPR. Traylon Burks. Raptor says, fuck it. I don't care that this man did not run a 4 one 40 yard dash. And you know what? I'm with him. I don't give a shit either. I posted my rankings on Twitter today, and he is my... <laughs> he said, wrong button. Uh, I was just gassing him up, too. I was like, sharp pick, great pick. Love to see it. You're not a coward. You're not a peasant. Turns out you are a peasant. Turns out you are a coward. Listen, I'm not even going to knock people if they take Traylon Burks at the 101. I personally feel like Brees Hall is kind of in a tier of his own right now after that combine, after that fake combine. But, you know, it is what it be. So we have Traylon Burks. Brees Hall goes off at the 102. So, um, so Traylon Burks runs a 4.55 at the 40-yard dash. But, like, I don't care. He's still built like A.J. Brown, man. He's still got that. 6'2", 225 type body, right? Body. The ones that the girls at Arkansas, you sleeper, what are you doing over here? They're shooting sounds out me at me right now from the left, from the right. I need to turn you down because I can't be scared. I can't be yelling. We're not allowed to yell. So we've had Traylon Burks. we got Brees Hall out of Iowa State. Uh, Brees Hall 101 for me. Malik Willis is the QB1 for me in super flex leagues. It's really going to depend on draft capital and where he goes in the NFL draft. I've heard rumors as high as number two to Detroit. If that's the case, then yeah, you argue him. I mean, you could probably take him 101 if you need a quarterback. I probably still take Brees Hall. I don't know if Malik Willis is going to sit for a year. He's a pretty raw prospect right now coming out of Liberty. Some people got accuracy concerns. I think you can take those concerns and shove them straight up into a very warranted notepad. And we have Drake London. Kenneth Walker, Garrett Wilson. This is going to rip quickly. Oh, fuck. I'm on the clock. 107. We've had the three top wide receivers go off the board. We've had both of the running backs I like. We've had the top quarterback. So next up in my rankings, if you look at it, I am a Kenny Pickett guy. So I like Kenny Pickett. My next wide receiver up would probably be not Kenny Pickett. So I'm going to grab Pickett there, and I'm going to take a safe pick in Pickett. Um, 
I don't really believe in Isaiah Spiller much. I don't really believe in the rest of the wide receivers at wide receiver. They're like in the wide receiver two tier for me, the guys after uh, these top three guys. So you're looking at Chris Olave and Jameson Williams and, you know, some sexy names, but I don't think they have that much upside here. Um, so Kenny Pickett, listen, if you're in a super flex league, you need another quarterback. Pickett's going to go in the first round. Anyone that has first round draft capital as an NFL quarterback, especially like top 15, is cool with me if you don't believe in the rest of the players. So uh, Isaiah Spiller goes at the 108 to Mike. And I think that's about where you start thinking of Spiller. Um, he is a guy that a lot of people like, you know, a lot of people. Uh, OK, Mike. OK, Mike. You know what? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it PG because I know there's a lot of children watching out here. So I won't argue with you because I could. J- I have the power to just fire you if I really wanted to. So we have Isaiah Spiller at 108. Isaiah Spiller is great pass pass catching back, 217 pounds. So he's got the he's got oh god, I got, <laughs> that was a funny comment. So he's got the uh, he's got the size, he's got the passing down ability. I just don't think he's a great athlete. He came in and, and did the jumping drills, the combine wasn't burstful whatsoever. So I feel like we're going to see a pretty shitty athletic profile. I don't think he's a great inside runner either. So kind of knocks him down my board a little bit. We have Jamison Williams out of Bama. He's super explosive, great route runner. Four fucking zero. He would have ran a four zero at this combine this year, the way the turf was set up here. So James Williams, obviously coming back from the torn ACL. Don't know when he's going to be back, probably midway through the season. So I think it's kind of more of a luxury pick right now. Honestly, if you are competing off the rip, you might want to look elsewhere uh, for a Jameson Williams owner, but I still like him as a player. David Bell, absolutely hate that pick at the 110. He is like 206, 208 in my rankings right now. He had one of the worst combines out of the wide receiver position relative to like what he did in college. So yeah, we're going to get David Bell all the way the fuck out the first round. This is what happened. I see I sent I sent the link to people that know not to draft David Bell. And then I also put the link in Discord when we needed two or three extra names. Rosenfield. I told when I when I dropped the message in the Discord, I said, if you don't know the rookie class well, then get the fuck out of here. Clearly, he decided not to get the fuck out of here and decided to get the fuck in here and uh, take us for a fucking spin zone cycle here. So David Bell at the 110, Sam Howell 111, Matt Corral 112. So you have two more quarterbacks go off the board. I think those are the right picks. I'm going to let draft capital dictate quarterbacks for me. Okay, so Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett are going to go first. I think Corral is probably going to be in the first. I don't know where Howell, Carson Strong, and Desmond Ritter are going to go in terms of the NFL draft. If they're first-round picks, you, you draft them at the back end of the first round of rookie drafts early second round, okay? So none of us are good at projecting what quarterbacks are going to do at the next level. So just listen to what the NFL says about them and draft accordingly. After those two quarterbacks, we have George Pickens, Jahan Dotson, Rashad White, Chris Olave, Kevin Harris. So you see Ray clowning, give him the dead emoji on uh, on Noah's Kevin Harris. I believe Noah had Kevin Harris all the way up at like running back two in his rankings. And then he had, he was like burstful at the, uh, at the combine. He jumped kind of high and now fucking nose over his skis on this shit. He's falling on the mountain. So far out over his fucking skis. He is right now. And I'm bike on the clock. So we are going to look at running backs. No, who the fuck is Raheem black? Yo sleeper. You are out of your mind right now. Oh boy. Um, this is like not how we needed this to be set up. I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to make moves over here. Trying to make shmoney moves. What other running backs are available? This is tough because the ADPs are so, so terribly set up right now. It's country white. Oh, Zamir White. Love me some Zamir White right here. Probably a wide receiver I liked on the board there, but I didn't get enough time to look at to look at the rest of the players. So I probably need to start using the Q a little bit more. Okay, so um, George Pick and Jahan Dotson. Yeah, that early second round is going to be where that pocket of like really, really nice wide receivers is that we sip, typically see year over year. So we see last year it was like the Devontae Smith and the Rashad Bateman and both Elijah Moore and, uh, you know, the more fucking bros. It's these guys that aren't elite ceiling kind of wide receivers, but they're going to be really, really nice pieces for your fantasy team. So I like the George Pickens pick. I really like Jahan Dotson as well. He's such a smooth route runner out of Penn State. A little bit undersized, but my comp for him is T.Y. Hilton, so we've seen him have plenty of fucking success there. And Josh Rosenfield with just another absolutely egregious Kyron Williams fucking mini-me. Oh, boy. Yeah, Kyle's out here talking shit about a four four nine quarterback who didn't even run a four four nine. Pretty sure he ran a four five two. Uh we have Carson Strong. I think that's a good pick. Carson Strong down at two eleven. Who the fuck is S Moore? Who is S Moore? Is Sky Moore. Hmm. Sky Moore. Metro Boomin. 
I don't know what you mean right now. Okay. Uh, so Rashad White at the 203. Really big fan of Rashad White. He was my RB4 prior to the combine. Still the RB4. He is sized at 215. He has really, really good athletics. Arizona State player. Two years of JUCO, but then balled out of Arizona State his senior year. Everything in the pre-draft process has been sexy. Alave is a baller. Kevin Harris, again, is a guy. Uh, he's like a two-down guy, but he's got good athleticism. So if you give him a hole, give him a hole like he might be okay in the NFL. Okay, no. Christian Watson, baller, North Dakota State University. Um, probably no one has risen up draft boards more than this kid. So athletic, 6'4", 210, ran like a 4'3", 40-yard dash. Again, fucking fake news on the 40, but I guess that's the only thing we can go off of. I took Zamir White. He is the Georgia running back that came in at 220, ran a 4-5, 4-4-0, four, 4-4-4, four, 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 something like that. Super, super, super good athlete. Is very much in that Damian Harris mold. I think uh, right here is exactly where you want to be grabbing a guy like Zamir White because he is athletic. He is big. He's coming off of two torn ACLs, which is why he never really like sees the role at Georgia in terms of a featured back. But, you know, all of the like per touch and efficiency metrics tell you that he's going to be a good player at the next level. We have Justin Ross, the 208 Clemson wide receiver who broke out as a freshman with Trevor Lawrence, but has done very little since then. Super athletic, really, really exciting, high ceiling player, but it's just dealt with like a bunch of devastating injuries. Um, so it's been tough to really get on board with him. Desmond Ritter, again, he's one of those quarterbacks. I'm just going to let draft capital dictate where he goes. He's more like Daniel Jones than I think like Jalen Hurts, which is a comp I've seen. Uh, over and over again. Kyron Williams out of Notre Dame, just small and slow. Carson Strong, for me, he seems like Jimmy G when I watch the tape. Sky Moore absolutely blew up the combine. Really, really strong slot receiver. We have Algier, Damian Pierce, James Cook. See, this is kind of like a sexy spot in the draft, man. I really like, I have a lot of picks in one of my important leagues. Ah, fuck, I'm back up on the clock almost. Oh, boy. Oh, fucking boy. If I count it, Ingram. I don't hate Jerome Ford. I like Pierce Strong. What wide receivers do we have? Johnny Johnson. What the fuck is that? Is Sleeper just like, is that just a place cue? John Mechie. I feel like that's probably an absolute steal. I like Alec Pierce. Calvin Austin is a baller, but he's small. Uh, My favorite player here, I, th I feel like, is probably Pierre Strong. Maybe John Mechie. I don't, I, I don't really know much about Mechie, actually. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to go with the devil I know. We're at Pierre Strong there. He is this 210-pound player who ran a 4.37. He played at uh, South Dakota State, I want to say. He is a really, really explosive athlete. My comp for him was like a mix of both San Francisco 49ers running backs, man. It is uh, a mix of Ro Raheem Mostert and Elijah Mitchell. Kyle out here saying you're sleeping on Jerome Ford. So you're sleeping on Jerome Ford way too much. I said it's easy to sleep on someone that puts you to sleep. Zing! And getting no fucking respect. Someone hit me with a fucking emoji. Somebody. I'm getting insecure right now. This is in, this is nice. We have all twelve people still in the draft. So he's got Jerome Ford. Now listen, Jerome Ford was a really, really highly productive player at Cincinnati. One of the key pieces of that offense. He's just not very elusive. He has straight line speed, and it's one of those guys that if you're given a hole, if you're given a big hole, you're going to need to go. There's a few guys in this class, like Brian Robinson. There's Jerome Ford. Um, you know, some of those guys, Tyler Algier. If you're given a big hole. They're going to be able to make things happen. So you need to go to a good offense. You need to go to a good offensive line. They're not guys that make things happen on their own. They're guys that NFL teams will love. Probably give them a roll in the first and second down because they're big. They're like 220, even though Jerome Ford's, I think, like 209. But he came in with good flat line speed. A lot of these guys in this class, though, are, are, are a little bit bigger than typical classes. And uh, an NFL teams, for whatever reason, like don't understand that that doesn't actually fucking matter. But they love it. Calvin Austin, super good athlete. John Mechie there is a 312. Those are both really good value picks. Jalen Weidemeyer. Uh, we had the first tight end go off the board. No, what the fuck do you know about tight ends? I feel like he just like felt like he was supposed to do that. Actually, you know, he's doing some he's doing some tight end work for us in the rookie draft guide. So maybe he did watch Trey McBride. Uh oh fuck. You know what? I'll take Alex Pierce. I like Alec Pierce. Also, Cincinnati player. Um, came in really, really big, well sized player, really good 40 yard dash time, good athlete all around. So I like Alec Pierce there in the fourth. Uh, Khalil Shaker, Jalen Tolbert, Isaiah Likely, Keontae Ingram, Jarion Ely. These are listen, dude. If if you got picks from like the two hundred five through the end of the draft here, these are all really good value players. This the the combine really cemented this class's athleticism to the point where it was like really really strong, man. Um, where it was like you know third and fourth round picks were pretty shitty prior to the combine, and then a lot of these guys now, right? Whether it was Algier dropped from the second, Damian Pierce is a, is a good player overall. 
you know, Brian Robinson tested well. Pierre Strong tested really well. Jerome Ford tested well. Count Ingram tested well. Like all Alec Pierce, all these guys tested well enough that you're confident taking them in the third and fourth round. So I, uh, I really like sitting at the second, third, fourth round in rookie drafts if you have a lot of these picks. So I wouldn't even be like, if you have a first, I know Noah made a video of this, this like topic talking about, um, let me take a screenshot and I can put it up on my screen. So this is the final board of the four round rookie mock draft. Again, those middle rounds get kind of sexy. If you have a first round pick, I am not opposed to moving it for like, if you have the one Oh three or one Oh four, like obviously there's good players. There's always going to be good players up at that spot. But I think a viable option because the tier listen, because this year there's no like clear cut top ranked guys at most of the positions. Um, that's where like the value breaks come in, like moving from like the one Oh three down to the one ten or the one eleven is a really good proposition. If you pick up an extra second or something like that, right? Like move the one Oh four for the one ten and the two, three, like I would rather have, Jamison Williams and Chris Olave than just, you know, Drake London or just Traylon Burks. Like, obviously, those guys have higher ceilings, but if you're trying to solidify your team, if you're in rebuild mode, I think that's a really good move for a lot of people to do. Also, like trading a random first this year, if you have like the 105 or something, and trading it for a first next year plus something this year, like the 301 or like the 210 plus a first next year, is something I would very, very much look in because next year is going to be a really strong class in terms of high end talent. And this year, again, they have pretty good fucking middle round prospects here that you're going to feel good about walking away even if all your picks start at like 207 or later you can walk away with Zamir White and a, and, and a possible starting quarterback and like Desmond Ritter or Carson Strong probably in a year or so them guys and then you know Damian Pierce and Brian Robinson and a bunch of these players you start to add up and like one or two of them will probably hit and you didn't really waste any any uh, rookie capital on them so the combine was a huge dub for most of the skill position players that is it for this video thank you all to all the participants that got into the mock draft you guys were awful and uh, that's what i was going for i wanted to come away make sure i won that mock draft and handedly based on the comments down below i won the fucking mock draft right i need some positivity in my life right now please okay yeah subscribe to the channel hit the fucking thumbs up button and follow all those other dudes on twitter i love you and i'm out